If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, do not fast forward. If you listen to the end of this intro, you're, we're going to give you a Black Friday deal. It's pretty freaking awesome. So for the first 45 minutes, Adam, Justin, and myself have some fun conversation. First, we talk about Black Friday, which again, if you tune into the end, you'll hear our Black Friday deal. We talk about windbreakers. These are uh, uh, jackets that really don't warm me up for shit. Just a trash bag. I'm glad they're back in style. Yep. We talk about Justin's Instagram milestone. Woo! I am killing it. 10K. He's, he's crushing Thank it. Thank you, audience. It Somebody only, likes you. It only takes a hot girl a week to get as many followers as he's got. Uh, yeah, then right. we talk about uh, cake farts. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, and early uh, internet virality. Thanks, we talk about mosh pits, pig piles, and high school fight shenanigans. Pig piles? Yeah, and then we talk about... It's a, it's a dog pile. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know why I wrote pig pile, pile there. What does that entail? I don't know. <laughs> Woo! Sweet! I don't want to be a part of it. And then we talk about uh, Justin's incredible fight diffusing technique <laughs> it works really well oh my god I, you know when you start telling a story you're like wait a minute that didn't work yeah, out that yeah, way yeah, uh, yeah. and then we get into the questions the first question was what is our favorite holiday indulgent food we mentioned our sponsor organifi in this adam actually made a has a great recipe for peanut butter cookies with organifi if you go to organifyshop.com forward slash mind pump you'll get 20 percent off anything in their store. The next question was, were we always so growth-minded? Apparently this person thinks very highly of us. Uh, can we recall the moments that we changed our mindset? So we talk about the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset during this question. It's a great conversation. It'll help you a lot with your fitness goals and, and other goals in life. The next question was, what do we think the future of self-healing looks like? You know, For example, meditation, quality movements, nutrition, like what do we think the future market for that looks like? We all think invest. It's yeah. going to be a huge market because everybody's so plugged in today. So uh, if you want to make some money, listen to that part of this episode. Essential oils. Finally, uh, in Maps Aesthetic, that's one of our programs. We actually take isolation exercises and some of the movements and put them before compound movements, which is uh, not what you're supposed to do. Of course, we don't do things. Yeah. Uh, according to what other people say. We do what works. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes isolation exercises are great before compound lifts, so we kind of get into the rationale. If you do it this way. Right. Um, now, in our butt builder program, we have a butt builder bundle uh, that we actually utilize a lot of this, and this is great for people who they do squats, they do deadlifts, you know, they do lunges, and they just don't feel their glutes. Their glutes aren't responding the way that they think that they should. In the Butt Builder Bundle, we include MAPS Aesthetic and MAPS Anabolic, and we also include a modification that gives you movements and exercises that you do before those heavy lifts to get your glutes to really fire. You should see some of the before and afters people have been sending Doug with the oh, Butt Builder Bundle. Now, check this out. We've also had a lot of new listeners. It's it, Black Friday! And it is Black Friday. So Give them something, Sal. Our MAPS Anabolic Hit Program. Hit them with it. Our MAPS Anabolic Program is our foundational program. This is the one we think everybody should start on. It's extremely effective for building muscle and strength. And our MAPS Prime Program is correctional in nature. And what it does, it's got a self-assessment tool. And what it does is it teaches you how to prime your workout so you get better recruitment patterns and better results regardless of the workout that you're doing. Throw your pre-workout away. Both of those programs, MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Prime, half, half off. This is the most discount you'll ever see on any of our programs. It's only for the Black Friday and the Black Friday weekend. So it ends on the 26th. It won't come back. Again, MAPS Anabolic, 50% off. MAPS Prime, 50% off. Tell your friends and family to get those programs at that discount. Go to mindpumpmedia.com. Hey, happy turkey day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something like that, right? Oh man, man! You know what? Uh, I bet everybody would see. What time does this hit, Doug? Like like five o'clock for them? Four o'clock Pacific. Uh, Everyone's getting fat oh, right, right now. Right now, they're sitting fat down. Tummies. Oh, and yeah. I'm telling you, get up, go take a walk, go, go stretch at least. Did you guys know that the day after Thanksgiving is the highest 
uh, call rate to plumbers for clogged toilets. What? <laughs> what? Are you serious? <laughs> for clogged toilets. Is this a true story? Are you making this up? I'm making it up. Oh, but I feel like it, come on. I feel like it'd be true, though, in what? Justin's house. Yeah, you get like Aunt Gertrude on there. Hey. <laughs> Drop Watch it. out, man. Drop no, dropping some, dropping some b- Everybody, bombs. Everybody's trampling each other into Best Buy and shit tomorrow on Friday, God right? damn it. You oh. know what I hate about the holiday season? Is that is that slowing down yet, though? I mean, is that like getting Cause better? Because of the cyber- I don't know. I don't know. Is it? People still go to the, go to the mall. shit. Go to the mall right now and try not to pull your hair out. Yeah. Do, so you guys, do you guys still go out? So we, I mean, this the last couple of years, Katrina. Well, are we I, buying each other presents, by the way? No. Good. What? We're men. I don't think what we the should. What's wrong with you? Men don't buy other men. You know presents. what? Doug already bought stuff for us. I could tell. Oh my god. Doug's like, Doug. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, called, it's called Thrive Market. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. We look yeah. forward to that for sure. The pressure to get each other gifts. You fun. guys don't have to buy me anything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh. <laughs> I already told you guys what's up, dude. I just I want uh, toilet paper if you get me anything. You know the yeah. rules. Yeah. You know the rules. Yep. Let's go to Costco. What do you buy an asshole? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> toilet paper. <laughs> it makes so Fuck much you. sense. Fuck you, guy. Bro, yeah. you, you matched really well right now. Thank you. Yeah. You look like- um, you. My mom dressed me today. It looks like my track coach <laughs> or something. My mom laid yeah. my clothes out today. You, you look like 1989 is in style. Dude, the windbreaker's back, man. It's, it's back. super- Does it really break wind, though? Does it? I mean, it's <laughs> it's kind of like uh, I don't mean it flows the, with it. I don't mean in the farting sense. It ruffles. I mean, literally, when I was a kid, I'll never forget this. For Christmas one year, my aunt got me a windbreaker, yeah. and she told me like, "Oh, this is." I'm like, "Oh, it's cool. It's a jacket." She's like, "No, this is a windbreaker." So I'm like, in my mind as a kid, I'm like, <gasps> "Whoa, this fucking breaks the wind." Like you, when you walk, it breaks. The yeah, wind. I'm like, I could I could wear this in cold weather. And I'm not gonna feel shit because yeah. it's gonna break it. Those are lies. It's no, there's no warmth. No. It does zero. It, it's, it's almost as no, it's almost like nothing. It's like thin uh, sheet over you. It's, and that's it, doesn't, it. <laughs> it doesn't warm a gas. It's like wearing thing. a plastic sheet. What's it for? Yeah, like a garbage. What's bag. What's the purpose it's of it? Like it's like a garbage a, bag with arms. It's like a parachute turned into a jacket. You yeah. know what's what's cool about them is that you can that you can wear them when it's warm still. Because it's not like they should call them yeah, warm it's kind breakers. of like an in betweener. It is an in betweener. There yeah. you go. That's a better it's, name. It's like an in betweeners. <laughs> yeah, it's like a liner of nice an actual jacket, bro. You know? Yeah, nice tweener. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing the t- rock in the tweener. And when you walk, it makes the. <laughs> zip, 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 I, <laughs> I was so excited when I saw the style come back. I told Katrina, I'm like, I loved windbreakers, dude. I yeah. used to wear windbreakers all the time. When Did I was you really? Oh, all the time. I, had, like, I loved all. the starter jackets. Like they were like a thin one, you know, the, just uh-huh. like that with the windbreaker. Uh-huh. Yeah, those are those are rad. Do you guys remember the starter parkas? Of course. Oh, what? dude. So what, what are you, you talking to? What? Okay, Come sorry. Yeah. What, yeah, we which, all grew up together. Which one did you guys have? Cowboys. I had UCLA. Actually. What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cowboys, mm-hmm. UCLA, uh-huh. I had Niners. Of course you did. Niners. Yeah, Niners. Yeah. You know what I, I did? I had one of those later on. Did you guys do this, though? What? I want to mm. see how cool you guys were, because mm. I'm, I'm pretty cool. Yeah. I went to the- uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you are, and I'm I, glad uh, you had to profess that. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I got the beads- that went on the oh god I remember forgot that people used to do that remember the, the, remember yes, the beads on the, on the on the drawstring because remember, drawstring. remember it had one of those little square or the, like uh-huh. round you could pinch it and you could roll it off and then people would put so the you beads. got like custom beads you would do the colors you would take your, your sister jacket. you would take your sister's beads that oh, she that she did because she used to make that's, those bracelets that's embarrassing with, and you would put it you would put it on top of that and then you would you would zip. accessorize yeah you would totally bro I I why do we have cake what why, <laughs> what? why, did, why did Taylor why did Taylor bring a cake in what? what is this? Pull. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> I did it. Pull it all the way out. I, I, I want to read it. What is pull it? it out, oh, pull yeah. it all Somebody the way out. video this. Oh, dude. What does it say? <laughs> it says, congratulations, 10K to the Brad Pitt of podcasting. <laughs> Yours truly, my pump, Justin. Oh, so oh, this my dude, you, God. You, you oh, didn't think, you didn't, I did it. You didn't think the dad would forget you Ditch, hitting 10K on Instagram Ditch, and not Ditch. get you a fucking cake, did I you? I fucking love you guys. So, oh, so yeah, because you got so 10,000 followers yeah. on Instagram. You know what? It That's was, a good job. You know, it was like a, a journey, mm-hmm. and I was really <laughs> riding a lot of coattails. I'd say I was drafting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I was like really drafting you guys. And. <laughs> I finally like it took me to the finish line. What's the what flavor is that? It's got spring yeah, chocolate. It? That's, that's, cho- that's chocolate chip. Just stick my face in it. Like, what's, God damn it! Uh, mm. yeah, I think we should get you delicious. a fork. We should get you a fork. I definitely want to buy. Well, it. oh wait, yeah. before we destroy, make sure Taylor gets a, a photo <laughs> yeah. of it. You're so funny. You actually got me that. Fuck so yes, crazy. I did. Yes, yes, yes yeah. I did. Now you uh, have to eat the whole thing, though. Fuck <laughs> you. The really? whole thing. Everything. Oh, throw the, up. Truth though, I was I was I was having such a hard time timing it because you were like 10k, then you dropped down to nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine, and I was like, God, dude, I don't want to show up the. Oh, it's so finicky. Yeah, 
Yeah, you know? right. It can't like, be nine thousand like, something. I, I'm sorry, but I can't like that post. You and, know, like people bail on. Right, the, right. The, and then like yesterday, shit. yesterday you rolled over, and then yeah. we got Thanksgiving tomorrow, and I was like, fuck, I can't. I wanted to make a. I was gonna make a badass custom one with the, the Instagram <laughs> on so it. Like, funny, dude. That takes two uh, days. That motherfucker was still fifty bucks for that thing, man. Wow, what? fifty dollars? I mean, it's, yeah, on a cake we're not even gonna eat. It's probably totally yeah. a good investment. I don't know. Oh, like, it is. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a fucking milestone, bro. It's nice, bro. You're gonna yeah. remember. You remember you know certain birthdays. You're gonna remember 10k Instagram. I don't know I'm, why I'm this. Do a whole lot I don't of know this why today. this reminds me of that video. You guys want to watch that video? Cake farts. 10K all day. You never saw. Woo! You never- I did it, America! <laughs> Whoa! I fucking arrived. <laughs> you know this. The Brad Pitt of podcasting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> Why? I don't get that. You know. Uh, you get- listen, it doesn't matter if it you get for- it or not. Yeah, yeah. It, that's what people call me. <laughs> the Brad. So. I just have to like accept it and own it. Because you're handsome. Oh, yeah. shit. It's all because you're handsome. Yeah. Taylor, could you bring me like a, a plastic fork because I am a chocolate chip fan <laughs> and I do want to, I want to bite of that. Is it cookies cake. and cream? Because that's kind of what no, it looks it's, like. No, it's chocolate chip. It's chocolate. Oh, okay. It's chocolate chip. I'm ice down cream with cake. that. Mm. I'm down with that. Mm. Mm. I'm, and you know, selfishly, like I, I probably could have went and got a cheaper cake at like Safeway and then done that. <laughs> but you're like, totally. I'm going to do it too. Yeah, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to get in on this. <laughs> Surprised like, it isn't red velvet, to be honest. Oh, they didn't have nothing like that, man. Oh, man. It was a bit too fancy. It was hard to make it happen within 24 hours because if you make it like super custom, they want like two, three days to do it. And it's like ridiculous. I'm like, fuck. Is it it from Baskin Robbins? Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Baskin Robbins is is the jam. It It is. It is. is. My kids love their cake, uh, ice cream cake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's It's really good. So you guys don't don't remember Cake Farts? No. Cake Farts? You never saw that? It's a video? So remember back in the day, two girls, one cup, and then all that gross stuff? Dear God. So then it was like a string of gross videos, and there was one called Cake Farts, and it's this (laughs) chick that sits on cake and then like farts (laughs) through (laughs) through the frosting. Yeah, it's like she like lifts her butt up you and it's see like, it like rumble and well she like she like sits on it so she gets all <laughs> yeah cake on her butt and then she'll sit yeah. up and like and then she'll sit <laughs> are you it's, kidding me no, this, guy, God. this guy watches dude the, you, the weirdest videos you are weird I want to know what was in your oh search to get that Dude, I, once Google cake farts. Hold, uh, you, you were like, I'm just wondering if people have cake farts. No, 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 no. <laughs> this was during that period of time when, for whatever reason, there was all these videos that people were talking about and it was circulating. <laughs> and somebody said, somebody said to me, like, oh, dude, you got to look up cake farts. And so I did. You remember the, the videos that used to <laughs> v- videos that used to go viral back then when YouTube first started? What? Like the rainbow, the double rainbow. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, and the, oh, the two, awesome. the two girls, one cup wasn't YouTube. Was Hell like, no. Yeah, they never allowed that. That Fuck, just was, was the, the cake internet. farts. Cake farts was nothing was YouTube. There was no there was never no dirty stuff on YouTube. Was this before YouTube? No, this was uh this was right around after Be honest, how many donkey shows have you seen? Never. I've never seen a donkey. Really? That's gross. I don't know. I That's just, terrible. I Did you see one? Ask. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's like I had one for a birthday. No. <laughs> Did you go to Mexico and see one no, live? No, 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 no. Might have caught a video here. Oh my there. god. Yeah, Is that a real thing in Mexico? Yeah, yeah, apparently. I don't know. That's the rumor, but I don't know if it's real. That's one of those things like, you know, if you like this, you might also like this, right? <laughs> what? I was like, no, I don't like this. <laughs> what were you looking at before that, th- that it thought you like that, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Yeah, That's weird. the part I want to know. Thank you, Taylor. So weird. Yeah, no, like there's a lot of uh, myths that maybe not be true. Like, remember you guys, okay, how about this? Remember when we were kids and people would say, oh, if you get that, that's, that drug in Mexico called Spanish fly, and you give it to a girl, she gets super horny. Do you guys remember that? Spanish fly? I do and remember Bill hearing Bill Cosby that. got a hold of it. No. Oh. <laughs> and it all went to hell. Jesus Christ. Yeah. No, apparently it was this, This it was, the rumor was it was like this drug called Spanish fly. And if you give it to a woman, she would become incredibly sexually aroused and would just have to have sex with you. Totally false. That is magical. It's a fake, fake, fake. Could, could you, That's so magical. Sal, Sal tried this at least three or four times. He's like, this so did work, yeah, this bro. This is bullshit. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, hey, babe, take this vitamin C. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours later, don't you want to touch me? Yeah. No, it's fake because I looked it up. <laughs> it's a uh, fake myth. Uh, it's not true. I do remember here. That was a long time ago, though, too. How did things go viral before the internet? Because things did go viral. It was all word of mouth. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Well, no. Think- For example, when we were talking about the beads on the parka, that wasn't on TV. That was no like right, right. We it just you, everybody you, did. You it. and I grew hours or hours apart from each other, and so everybody did it. Right. Or how about this? Here's one that always trips me out: blowing in the Nintendo cartridge to get that shit to work better. That's amazing. Everybody too. knows that. Yeah. But everybody knows that. How do we all learn it, dude? I went a step further. I took like an eraser and I would like try and clean it with the eraser and then blow on, and sometimes it would work. An actual eraser. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know who what, told what, me that. Somebody's the, brother told me to do that, and I fucking believed it. That's like the like worst. Idiot. That's like one of the worst things you can do in a video I game. Know, I know. I think I ruined half of my games. Oh man, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. This cake is really good. Is it good? Oh my god, oh, I'm, good. I'm getting down on this. Yeah, dude, you get yourself. Okay. Eat it before I do the cake farts on it. Do not do that. Careful. Yeah. Enjoy your cake, buddy. Sprinkle, sprinkle it. You deserve it, Justin. I know I do. You deserve it. You work. You work real hard for them, friends. Fuck yeah, I do. <laughs> Yeah. His I'm, 10, I'm gonna take you guys to the promised land. His ten thousand followers are like fucking hardcore they followers. Are hardcore, like yeah. the most. You know, like I could do anything. What I'm, percentage they're of gonna, you think, they're gonna ride with me to the end? What percentage of you think are Star Wars fans? At least eighty percent, probably. Oh wow, I would say no way. There's a lot, dude. Like I, uh, <laughs> everything that's like half of what I talk about. Everybody's just like, oh yeah, you know. Get it. Do you get Wars. a bunch of weird Star Wars messages from people? I do all the time. Like, it's like. You know, if there's anything circulating on the internet that has like, which is kind of cool, paraphernalia or anything Star Wars related, like I'm getting tagged. Let's just put it that way. Which and, I, I'm fine with that. They don't ask you like technical questions, like, "Hey, what do you hey, think of the theory of the new?" Those are your people, dude. Your people ask you like medical no, questions. I don't have dude, real Sal, nerds. I have <laughs> like, I have like fringe nerds. You know, like people that dabble. You know, not oh, okay. like not like actual, not like nerds. super nerds. Yeah, I get. I get questions that are way out of my scope of knowledge, like way out of my scope of knowledge. Yeah, yeah. like my grandfather. Because you talk with such conviction. My grandfather has Alzheimer's and just was diagnosed with lung cancer. And what kind of you know what kind of diet and supplements do you think you should take? And I'm like, mass performance. <laughs> <laughs> you should do mass performance and prime. You should prime before every time he wakes up. That's the move, right? Yeah. get rid of his cancer. Oh my god, dude! What an asshole you would be if you did some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, has he read the Intuitive Nutrition Guy? Don't lie. Don't you think lie. They'd laugh hey, or get really mad. Don't lie. The 23 year old version of you would do some shit like that. No. Yeah. The 20. No. Yeah. The, the 20. Not for something like that. Well, oh, yeah. No. Buy maps. Yeah. You would- <laughs> they walk out with six hundred dollars of supplements. <laughs> oh, he's got cancer. Well, check this out. Oh man, all these different multivitamins. No, I, I, no, they'll ask me questions, and I'll always answer the same way. I'll always be like, look, I'm not a doctor, but here's something you can read, and I'll send him an article or something like that. Right. Yeah. But way out of my scope. Or sometimes, even in our Q and A, somebody asked us in the Q and A, like, uh, what were they doing? Sleep training for their infant, and what we thought of of infant sleep training and stuff. Oh like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know what's going on yeah, there. Well, you guys have kids, so maybe they... I was wondering... I mean, they, I saw Having that, kids doesn't make you an expert on kids, no. I promise you. Yeah. No, no, it doesn't. Absolutely. No, it doesn't. There's a lot of... Like, it it means kids. you've experienced kids. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't mean you know shit. Yeah. It, like, I've survived, like, the first, like, part of barely. it. Barely. Yeah. Barely. Yeah, but I feel, like you guys, I feel like you guys would have some advice uh, along the lines of, like... Because I think a lot of parents make mistakes with how long they let their kids sleep in their bed. I think they make mistakes on picking them up all the time every time they cry. I mean, I don't have kids, but I know there's like certain rules like that even with my yeah. with my boys, my two dogs, dude. It's like you just But those are all generalizations, you know? It's like picking up your kid too much. It's like who's to say you should or shouldn't do that? Yeah, you exactly. Yeah. You know what it makes like so you're bonding with them. So it's like, yeah, you can push them off and be like, "Hey, figure this out." So check this out, right? Yeah. So the old mentality was if your kid doesn't want to sleep or cries or whatever, let them cry it out yeah. and they'll fall asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the old mentality. And it makes sense in the in the sense that it works. Like if you do it and the kids learn how to self I mean, I did that now, I was a dick. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, I some lady was talking to me about this and she goes, and we were talking about evolution and evolution and it's in you know what it means for nutrition and if you eat based on how we evolved, you're probably gonna need a healthy diet and all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, well, what do you think about evolution and how we raise our kids? And I never thought of that. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she goes, huh. do you think a tribe would let a kid scream throughout the middle of the night and attract predators? And I was like, motherfucker. No way. Never. Yeah. We for sure picked up the kid and coddled them mm-hmm. to make them quiet because we don't want the lions to hear yeah. or whatever to hear that there's a freaking little infant in or, the dark. Or they did cry and do that. And then the lions around. ate the kids that cried all the time. And then the other kids learned not to cry. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> did, you Brutal. About, did you think about that for a minute? That's why I had so many kids. I got a little, I got a little oh. baby Sal screaming, crying right yeah. next to me, and all of a sudden he gets eaten by the lion. I'm like, I am fucking yeah. crying. <laughs> I'm just gonna lay here. That kid'll learn. I'm yeah. gonna lay here really quietly. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Honey, you need to have. We need to have more kids. You got to feed the lion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's get back to it. No, yeah. but it's, that's an interesting theory, though. It's well, I mean, it's kind of weird, right? If you think about it, it is an interesting mm-hmm. theory. 
I yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I what I don't know where I stand. I don't know what my mom did. She fucked up on me on a lot of things, but I don't know if she did that did that good or bad. I bet you were a big crier. Yeah. You really? probably cried. Yeah, yeah you're fucking big, big mouth. <laughs> Quite like yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were probably. Nipple. A, you're ah! probably a, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I we were pretty independent. My uncle tells me stories of like you know coming. My dad worked swing shift, and so uh, there'd be times like it'd be like new. My uncle would say he'd come over to my house, and I would be up feeding my sister in the kitchen. Uh, obviously, it would be like this giant bowl of cereal or something like that. But it'd be like one o'clock in the afternoon. My parents would still be asleep, and we'd be up and in the kitchen and doing things. How old were you? Yeah, like five and under. And you're feeding them? Yeah. Feeding your sister? Yeah. Dang. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I that actually- That made me sad for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just picture this five-year-old, you know, getting food for yeah, his- like, yeah, just Captain taking, Crunch again? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Well, I've told you guys this story before. I remember getting in trouble one time, and I was, this is when I'm five. Uh, and obviously, I, I have like, I vaguely remember this. Um, I remember- my mom leaving to go to the grocery store and leaving me home and telling me to stay home. And my the, my neighbor friend, you know, a kid like three, four doors down came came and said that uh, he just got Zelda. Oh, and yeah. and so, you know, being a kid, and I, you just, I just left and went over and played Zelda. And my mom came back and I was gone. Yeah. Cops called, everything like that. It was like, a, you know, screaming, crying. And I came, you know, walking back home like... An hour no later, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you were probably not that bad. Justin was probably a little shit, yeah, just because I feel like you climbed shit and broke things. Oh, uh, yeah, from that perspective, yeah. yeah, I wasn't a little whiny bitch or anything. You know? <laughs> no. I, I was definitely like smashing <laughs> stuff and breaking things. Did you guys have anything that was unique to you when you were a kid, like a unique characteristic or something weird or funny? Yeah, I, I remember. I could I could remember things like 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 I could remember baseball card stats. And my my mom would use me like a like a party trick, so like her we'd have people over yeah. and she'd call me out, and she'd ask me to like rattle off like sports sports players and like what their stats were and things, and people were just like so amazed by it because I did I, I had all I collected baseball cards and I used to that's just, so funny you see so you were entertaining like everybody when mm-hmm. they come over I the same thing with me but on a different end like I would <laughs> I would like put on a little act like I would put these big huge glasses on or like a wig or something and I would just like you know act a fool in front of everybody you were a chubby laugh. kid huh were you a chubby kid uh, I mean I ate yeah. no not that you were you know, I'm not saying but you had chubby cheeks yeah 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 I wish you know I didn't have my kids weren't chubby when they were little <clears throat> yeah. they had my I was jeans a chunker. so yeah I like chunky kids <laughs> were you, you know I mean? were you really yeah. I feel like that it was I was super outgoing like I, there's a yes. like, there's a photo of me that my mom blew up I think I've told you guys this before it's me standing on a coffee table just like this one uh you know posing in my, you know bicep flexing and posing uh <laughs> in on in my underwear mm-hmm. see I used to argue with everybody and what used to piss people <laughs> off was I was good at arguing yeah. so my aunt my grandma whatever if they were watching me I, I would make that. I would make a very compelling argument, and they used to get frustrated because this little kid makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd still get spanked, mm-hmm. yeah. and, you know, whatever. But uh, I used to, and I would point shit out. Yeah. Till this day, I cannot stand hypocrisy. What I mean by that is, like, if you tell me to do something, but then you do it, it drives me crazy. But I was like that as a kid, dude. I was so much like this. and and so whenever parent, whenever I'd see an adult, this all makes a lot of sense. I'd see exactly. Yeah. I'd see an adult do something. I'd be like, hey, I thought you said, uh, and I'd point it out to them, and then they'd be all fucking. Oh my god, so funny. Yeah, like I, it, it, it's hilarious because if you look back, it's totally like it never like changed. Like so, for me, it's the same thing. Like even going through school, I would get so bored, uh, and when I would get bored, getting lectured to or like. Uh, I had this English class where we're all reading Shakespeare and everybody was like super bored to tears, you know, and like, cause you would just go, okay, you take this part, you take this part. I would always like raise my hand. I want to take a part, you know? And so I would, <laughs> I remember taking Mercutio's part and reading it like with a total, like, like, you know, stereotypical gay lisp. Did you really? Yeah, dude. And then, I, so I do that. Everybody's rolling, sends me to the the principal and, you know, tells my parents all this shit. But that, that's the only time I would get in trouble was like doing stuff like that. I used to love debating. I used to get bored. I used to love debating the teachers. I argued, uh, I argued a lot too. Always. Mm-hmm. Always would debate the teachers. And when I was real young, I was kind of weird in a few different ways. One of which was I didn't like to walk barefoot anywhere especially on grass. So if the kids were playing and shit in the grass and they'd like my my parents were trying to put me down, I'd lift my legs so that they wouldn't my feet wouldn't touch. <laughs> and then when they finally put me down, I'd cry and then they'd be like, "No, you need to." And I'd walk on the grass and then I'd say 
I tell them in Italian because that was my first language that that there's that I feel needles. There's needles in the ground because I don't like the feeling of them mm. touching my feet. Mm. Weird kid. Is that, that is, still that a thing for you? That is weird. Huh? Feet? Super sensitive feet. Yeah. They're way better now because now I, I walk around barefoot a lot. But fuck. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. You touch my feet, man. You're going to get kicked oh, yeah. in the face. Yeah. I have I have that with my nose. I don't like my nose touched. Mm. I'll f- fucking someone touch me in my nose, they get all Ugh, freak out. Really? Mm-hmm. You I, think, been- I think it's because of my allergies. So my nose is like sensitive. Mm. I have a sense. I have a really sensitive nose, and so I don't like it to be touched. Or get your hands off my face. You dude. ever break your nose? Yeah. Uh-uh. You broke your nose? Yeah. Oh. And I I reset it myself like an idiot. Oh really? It's yeah. not cricket. It's it, pretty straight. It is cricket. <laughs> is it really? Courtney makes fun of me all the time. She's like, "You should have gone to the doctor." Yeah, <laughs> you fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I got my nose is broken. I went to a concert and like went crazy and uh, mosh pit. Yeah, mosh pit and got you know a, a loose elbow to the nose and smash. Yeah, my nose went like all the way to the side. God, oh, and, I remember mosh pits, uh, dude. I never did a mosh pit. I, I would uh, rage in mosh pits, dude. I never did a mosh pit. I did a, you know where I did it actually uh, quite a few times was over at what we're just uh, what the Catalyst or whatever. In, in, oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to go down there. I had a roommate. How do you get in a mosh pit? Do you just go in there and? Dude, you just uh, here's the thing. The first time this happened, my cousin and and this is funny because we used to she used to take me from we would go to church and and she would actually take me we like oh yeah we're at church we go to like a, a punk concert instead and and she just like threw me into a mosh pit and i was like maybe 15 or something oh wow. <laughs> i was just so scared dude this skinny little twig and like people just fucking passing me around throwing me around and and then i just started like fighting my way out and i was like oh my god that's such an adrenaline rush it's i, I a, ran right back in i'm like ah it's such a weird thing when you think about it it is Only, a, that's something women would never do oh no way it's such a guy no there's thing. girls there's girls doing it yeah so, come on super rare it's such a guy very thing. rare but yeah 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 you yeah. still see you still see that's some, something we would invent like oh dude i want i can't get rid of this fucking getting, like temporarily violent yeah, we I all agree i got to get rid of this angst what do i do i know let's fucking punch everybody yeah. around us yeah, it's weird. It, no, it is. It it's is fun. It is a little different. Yeah, we used to we used to do that. And, you know, I remember too. We used to when we used to be at football games. I don't know where this started too. Where every touchdown you dogpile everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, like yeah. Everybody says, like yes. You be watching a game and you want to, you want to make sure you're the first one to dogpile <laughs> and somebody else. Otherwise, you're at the bottom of the dogpile, oh, right? No. So like, I wonder how much of this violent shit that we do is like just repressed sexual energy. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> just punch each other, yeah, fucking there, wrestle, yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just to get you know. Probably, you know what I'm saying. Know, Probably, maybe. yeah, because it's all around that time, right? It's around. It's seven, just a lot of energy. Seventeen yeah. to twenty-five window for sure. A lot it's of, like one or the other. It's like violence or sex. You know, it's like well, what I've, are we doing here? I've shared with you guys stories before. Like my my cousin was notorious for this. We go anywhere, and this was all through high school and even into a little bit of junior college. Like he, we went to a, a, a house party. It was it was inevitable. I mean, it was for sure. If he was not sleeping with a girl, if he didn't get hooked up, fight. we were fighting. It was just guaranteed. It was guaranteed. guarantee. Oh, it's the worst. So I, you know, I don't even. What the fuck? Where does that come from? Like, yeah. Why does that have to be? <laughs> like, why? Why are you either fucking or fighting? Yeah. Why is it got to be one or the other? It's it's an it's a it's how it's almost like it's how guys bond early on with each other. It's like an acceptable way to bond. Like you know, either we're having sex with people, and now we're buddies, or we're in this violent whatever, and then we're cool. There is something it's like around the old Viking genes or something. There is something about Pillage that. And plunder. Uh, when I do remember too, like. Uh, you know, you, when you would get in those situations, it was kind of this like, who's with me and who like who actually was like the friends that were like that got involved. And because you always had those friends that were like, oh, we get involved, like they just stay out of it. And then <laughs> you had, mean the smart ones. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then you have your yeah. then you had your best friends or your most loyal friends who what I guess we're going, you know, what I'm saying and here we go. Yeah. So I think that like as at those those formative years, I think you're trying to find your like tribe, like who's got my back, you know, what I'm saying? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you just remember reminded me of a story. It's kind of related, but I was walking home from school one day, and a car drives by me. And in the car, there's three dudes and a girl. And I knew the girl. I don't know her very well, but I knew her. And she kind of looks over at me, and then all of a sudden, the car swings around. And I must have been, I probably a freshman in high school. Car swings around, and the dudes in the car are seniors. And they get out of the car and the dude's like, he, I don't remember, he asked me a question like, you know, you know, what are you doing? What are you looking at? My, I don't remember what it was that he said. Something like, I'm doing something. I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. He's like, I'll throw this fucking drink right in your face. And he like, whoosh, splashed the soda in my face. And it's him and three, and his three, and his two buddies. 
And I'm the kind of person like, if I have to back down at some point in life, I'm going to find you. Like at some, I will never forget. And I yeah. didn't. So he, he gets back in his car and I'm totally like, okay, one day I'm going to get this. Cause uh, they're, they're huge. Memory huge, huge. bank. Yeah, yeah. I will remember you. So fast forward, I'm a junior in high school. And when I was a junior, me and my buddies, what we would do is we get boxing gloves and we would box each other. Now the difference between Sal at freshman year and Sal at junior in high school year is 50 pounds at least. Like I'm a lot bigger now and a lot more confident in myself. So we're doing these boxing tournaments and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm typically I was winning, you know, the, the boxing matches. And one of the guys there, we were at his house and then all of a sudden a car rolls up and he's like, oh, it's my brother. It's my older brother. And it was that fucking dude oh, wow. that splashed the drink in my in my face. And so I'm like, yes, we're going to fight. Like yes. for sure, we're gonna fight right now. Can you yeah. can you go? Can you feel the adrenaline going? Hundred percent. Like from back to that. hundred percent. Those moments are like, <laughs> I had so huge. Well, the thing is, I had lived that moment <laughs> as a kid. You know? I had lived that moment in my mind so, so many times. Like if I ever run into him, I'm gonna surprise him by putting him to sleep. I'm gonna surprise him. So he's. I see him in the car. He's getting out. I've already made up my mind. Like I'm gonna fight this guy. So he comes out. Doesn't recognize me at all. Doesn't know who I am. So like, hey, what's up, bro? Hey, everybody, hey, what's going on? So I'm like, this guy doesn't even know who I am. Yeah, perfect. Per- exactly. That that or really deep down, he's a little scared too. Now, I don't know. Because- probably in like real life, mm-hmm. thinking about like, it, there's probably like part of him. Well, so here's the thing. I know the guy, and the guy was a total thug, degenerate, like whatever. I don't think he's the kind to like necessarily be. I don't know. I don't know. You say that, but let's be honest, right? Knowing what we know now and being older, you're right. like the people that are like that are the most insecure and scared. Right? You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, so totally he's putting up a front. Yes. Yeah. So I bet you he does recognize. So he gets out of the car and everybody's like, oh, this and that. And I'm like, hey, dude, you should box too. Like, yeah. why don't we put the gloves on? Let's, let's have some yeah, fun. Yeah, let's, let's put the gloves on and box. <laughs> so he's like, nah, I don't want everybody's like, oh, and I'm like, and so I knew everybody would egg him on. So he gets the gloves on. I have the gloves on. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is great. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna fucking just enjoy this. Right? Are you really excited? Or are you scared? I am. I am both. I'm. Yeah. I, oh, you always get scared when you're gonna, you know. Fight. Yeah, when you're yeah. gonna fight someone. But there's that part of me that's like, th- like this is this is gonna be awesome. Yeah. So he tries a swing, and I swing at him once, and I barely miss him. He sees how hard I swing, swung the punch, and he throws his gloves off on the ground. He goes, I don't want this man. He goes, you're going to knock me out, bro. And he comes and gives me like a high five. He's like, I got to puss out. And he like walks inside. Wow. And, I, and I was actually satisfied by that. I actually was like, you of know course, what? Of course. Yeah. He was scared. He yeah. was. See, yeah. He was scared. scared. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. yeah. He was definitely putting scared. Up front. That's it why was, yeah. Those people are the ones to fuck with people the most. Yeah. You notice that? Always. It's just like, dude, what are you doing? Always. Yeah. I think I think the the, the tougher somebody acts, the, the bigger of a wuss they normally Have are. Have you guys ever had Absolutely. a revenge moment like that where oh. someone did something and then later on? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, one of the one of the biggest one of fights. My brother's friends. <clears throat> Go ahead. One of the biggest fights I got into in in high school. I remember this kid, and I, I think I've sh- I don't know if I shared this, this story. Now. I know I've shared the paintball story, right? Mm. So I shared the paintball story. We drove we drove around late at oh, night yeah, and yeah, shooting yeah, people yeah. with paintballs, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? Terrible. And, <clears throat> and one of the houses that we shot up was uh, this kid's sister, who uh, he, it was a group of wrestlers, right? I was a basketball player. They were wrestlers, so there was already in my school. Uh, wrestlers didn't like basketball players. Basketball players didn't like wrestlers. And the reason for that was was we had to share a gym, and our seasons were in at the same time. And so it's like we when we had the gym, and they would always be coming in or out at the before or after our practice, and it was always like you know get your shit out. We need to come in here and, and practice. And of course we'd have our chips on our shoulder, like nah, fuck you. Our practice isn't over. So there was always this like you know rivalry between it wrestlers and basketball players. And of course wrestlers are in high school and basketball players total different personalities too so you have like wrestlers like that at that age just think they're the shit and like they're the tough guys in school and stuff like that so there's imagine that's the group and that's this kid so he already we already don't like each other um but i'm not that i'm not one to even like dwell on that shit like i was a popular kid and friendly with everybody so i'm like eh, whatever fuck the wrestlers but i don't you know whatever but we shot the we did the paintball thing and you know, shot a sister in the middle of the night, and I was like just in the back of the the suburban. I wasn't even somebody who was shooting the gun. I, we were with upperclassmen. Mm-hmm. I was just like along for the ride, but it was a perfect opportunity for him to like single me out because you're you a know, basketball player. I'm a basketball player. There. I was there, and, and he has to defend his sister, right? So it was on from that point on. The rest of like 
my that year he was constantly antagonizing me with his friends and they would find me anytime i was by myself and they would roll up three four five deep on me yeah mm-hmm. and, and we got into a couple like little scuffles which turned into basic high school wrestling matches nothing really happened and i didn't want to fight like i didn't have an issue and i, I remember saying like you know i ain't got no problem dude like I don't have anything against your sister. I don't have anything against you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what your deal is with me. And we'd be at parties all the time. Anytime there was a party, all his friends, my friends, we'd end up having to leave or they'd have to leave. It was always like, this was always going on. It went on for a whole year. And I remember we were at uh, one of my friend's places and uh, sure as shit, uh, we had actually just had kind of like this little scuffle thing that happened in the middle of the day and his friends uh, pulled me off of him and said, oh, no, fuck this. This isn't right. We'll do this somewhere else. We'll do this somewhere else. And we're at my buddy's house and we're just all, there's probably, I don't know, 10 of us, guys, girls, you know, high school drinking party type of deal. And um, up rolls their, their, all their buddies and they roll up in this Jeep and they're all fucking fired up, probably been drinking a little bit and stuff like that, bang on our door and stuff like that. Let's go down. And there was a park called Kerr Park and it was like this huge grassy park that was kind of like out in the country, like no cops would be out there and nothing's going on out the middle of nowhere. And they're like, let's go finish this. Let's go out to Kerr Park. And I remember being like, you know what? Fuck this, dude. I'm so tired of like- Let's get it over with. Yeah, dodging this kid and, and telling him like, no, I don't want to fight and stuff like that. Let's go. And it was crazy because by, it, t- it takes like 10 minutes to get out there. This was all building up. It was our party. That was their party. So there was like 100 some people out there. This is on video too. Somebody has got a videotape of it, photos of it and everything like that. It was that big of a deal. And uh, I got there. I got there first. Peeled off. It's so funny too because I remember throwing the shirt off. Oh yeah, right away. Sure. Yeah, peeled my shirt First off. First move. I'm, in, I'm in, a, in a wife beater. You know, Think, <laughs> I feel tough, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all 160, oh, all 160 pounds of me and stuff, right? <laughs> and uh, he rolled up, and he's a wrestler. So as soon as he came in the circle, in this big, huge circle, he shot me right away. He shot me. And went down, but when we went down, I rolled him over right away, and then I, I just beat the fuck out of him. I mean, it wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. People were counting and chanting the numbers that I was like, I mounted him, full mounted him, and I was just wailing on the back of him. I actually had to stop because I was so tired. It was so. It was like the first real like fight that where I had whooped someone's ass like this. They weren't breaking it up all quick. No, no one was breaking yeah. it. No one was breaking it up. It was we're it was, it was, like, it was on fight. Yeah. And the way the fight actually ended. Was because at that age I didn't have enough knockout power. You know, I, I hit. You I got tired. Yeah, I got tired. Just laid on him, <laughs> laid on him, and, and like hold him and just like, dude, yeah, you, do you done? Are you done? Yeah, he's like, done, I'm man. done. We're cool. We're cool. <sighs> we're cool. Yeah. But that's how the fight ended. Gatorade. I, I mean, I. But you I, had all that pent up like oh, all the times he oh, punked you or whatever. Man. Yeah. 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 No. It was. It was definitely. It was definitely a lot of rage in me at that moment for because of all the stuff that had kind of built up. And it was great because it was I was the one who was like, dude, I ain't, I ain't got an issue. I don't want to. I don't want to. Well, that's fight. the that's the, that's when you get the 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 anger. Right. When you're the mm-hmm. one trying to say no, 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 and then you snap. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a bad situation to be in for the other person. <laughs> yeah, usually. No, yeah. yeah. No, it was pretty bad for him for sure. Usually. Yeah. No, I I definitely your story kind of brought one up for me with the boxing because uh, we we dabbled in that a little bit and my brother had had some gloves and. Um, it, they were kind of oversized gloves, so it wasn't like like it was more for fun. Like we thought it would be a funny idea to like you know start kind of having rounds and stuff. And uh, he had I don't know if it was his birthday party here, just had a bunch of friends over. It was his he's two years older than me, and uh, he had some of his friends over. One of his friends like I never fucking liked. Like this guy was just an asshole to me, like always, and would just like I was like the butt of his jokes, you know, for everything. Like he would punk me. Uh, at school because like two years apart like in high school that's a big difference yeah and they're they're seniors or whatever i'm like you know i'm a sophomore and uh so he would see me on campus throw shit at me and like he was a fucking dick and uh <laughs> so he was there and uh and my brother like my brother always like he he would throw me in the mix because he think he always thought i was really tough and i'm like no don't get me <laughs> into this shit you know like i was like super scared like these they're bigger than me you know and so I didn't want to do it. And he's like, no, 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 do it. Put the gloves on. It's going to be hilarious. And, uh, and so it got to, you know, we were just kind of play fighting. And, um, and then I got to that, that guy, that guy's like, yeah, let's do this. And I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah. Let's <laughs> fucking do this. And then all of a sudden, like I changed, you know, and I was like, all right. And so he got a couple shots in and then that's when the switch went off. And then I started hitting him, and then I got him. We have this like basketball court, uh, at my parents' house and I got him against the boards. And I remember, 
fucking just out of nowhere, all these combos came like like a video game. I was like, bam, bam, uppercut, bam, bam. And I kept like hitting him into the into the wall. My dad comes out. He's like, hey, hey, what the hell's going on here? And he like broke us up and he had a bloody nose and everything. He's like, wow. And he actually like shook my hand afterwards. And I was just like, yeah. You know that you know the funny part for me good. was I so from like so fifteen that was like my first real big fight and I had little scuffles as a kid because <clears throat> I was definitely a little disturbed kid when after my dad passed so from like seven all the way through junior high I got in a lot of fights I got bullied and picked on when I was in Colorado so I've definitely been in a lot of scuffles and after that big fight then I got into quite a few fights all the way till about twenty five the irony is it wasn't until like twenty five did i did I like fill all the way mm-hmm. out like at twenty five was when I started pushing beyond two hundred it's pounds. funny once you feel start to feel really confident you don't want to no and I didn't even really want to back then because I was always the the tall guy outgoing personable talking like so I always drew attention to me and not like in like I wasn't trying to get that attention but it was because I would go into places you're a 6 foot 3 guy you're loud oh, yeah, you're a target yeah I'm a yeah. target every guy wants to size himself up yep. against me so it's like I always seem to be getting in these fights all the time and I'm like man this is fucking yeah. for a guy who doesn't like the fight doesn't want to fight I was, I know, I was always fights. trying to diffuse and like talk my way out of shit you know and then mm-hmm. when it when you back me up into the corner I just would have had to you, have you know to. I right. also had a lot of loyalty too so like I was somebody who you know, I because I I didn't have a lot with the family thing. I bonded with friends, so you could. I was a guy you could always count on. Mm-hmm. So I was definitely the first one called. Like if it was something going yeah. on, it's like yeah. you knew you knew that if something happened, that I for sure would not back out, or I'd be somebody you knew you could trust that I'd be right there by your side. But yeah, when I, the irony of all of this is when when I started training with MMA guys, that's when I really thought. I don't ever want to fight. Yeah, like let's not do this. Anymore. Never, because <laughs> you 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 don't realize it. I mean, you get in fights as a kid, and like you said, Adam, like you don't really have like the power to really hurt someone. You could still, don't get me wrong. Yeah, people still get hurt, can get hurt really bad. But a lot of those fights, you know, a lot of the fights I got into would be like a bloody lip, bloody lip, you know, nose. Right, right. You know, ring someone's bell, no big deal. Go home next day, of school, not a big deal. But when I train, started training in jujitsu, and then we get these MMA guys that would come in and. You would train with them, and I just realized, like, oh man, like you could you could really hurt someone. And it yeah. wasn't even so much like I felt like I would get hurt because there's always that fear when you fight. Like I don't want to get hurt. It's really the yeah. What you, if I really hurt someone? Right, right? I know. You know what I mean? Can what if I live with that? Yeah. If I do a good job, if I fight right and I do a good job and defend myself well, I still have to deal with like I've hurt somebody really bad, and that could throw you, in, it could put you in a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. And personally. You know, you could feel you could feel terrible about it. Maybe not for the person, but the people that are, you know that they're yeah. But even to. So, even somebody who, when you think about it, like even all the people that you know have got you angry or made you even want to get in that situation, you don't want to permanently. It's never yeah, you're not. You're yeah. not. And and then also what that could potentially do to you. I mean, like if you have, if you're in the middle of your career or you got shit going for you, the last thing you want is you you put somebody in a coma or put somebody in the hospital or you break something and you get sued. Like you don't. Yeah. At that point, There's that's way, way too many things. I think that's where the, the shift happened. Dude, for me I too, have a was, I have a buddy that went. Uh, uh, that almost went to jail. He no record, super clean, super everything. Defended himself, so he was the one that got attacked. Mm. But he broke the other guy's arm because he's a jujitsu guy. So he snapped the guy's elbow. Yeah, and almost went to jail over it because then, of course, the guy in in the court case or whatever. They press ch- charges. Yeah, like he's a jujitsu guy. Like he's a. I remember hearing about that, and I was like, whoa, it's so not worth it. It's so like my ego is not. It's fine. With just being like, yeah, do you whatever. remember? Do you guys remember the last time that you've had a defuse one, like as an adult now, or the last the last ad- adult fight that you had in? I and how don't. Old you were? I, I don't. It's hard to remember, but I don't even get there anymore. Like if there's no. a dude that's yelling at me because he cut me off or whatever, my one of my neighbors. I'm always like, whatever. Really? Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Whoa. You fought one of your neighbors? No, I didn't. Like fight. Oh, so you're saying like defuse it, right? Yeah. yeah well, yeah. either defuse it or what? Well, your your very last one. I was asking one of the other. Oh, whichever no, one you I'm, had this for me. is the, a diffuser just because. And he was an older guy. I mean, he was like 55, something like that. And he just so what sets me off is anything where my I feel like my kids are in danger. Oh or like, yeah, so, forget that. So he has this shitty dog that, like, they always have a muzzle on, right? And it's a very um, – it, it postures all the time. So when we walk by, it's just like – And um, so he would just let it roam free, you know, and it was on my property. And, like, it was, like, barking directly, like, and posturing at my kids. And my kids ran underneath the stairs, and it kept, like, barking. And, like, and it had its muzzle on and everything, but I – 
I went over to the guy and I was like, Hey, get your dog out of here. You know, like they've, it's been posturing and like going after my kids and all this stuff. And he's like, it's not on a leash. It's he's like, it's not going after your kids. Calm down. Oh, f- I was like, Oh man, that listen was here, motherfucker. And I got right in his face and I was just like, dude, like I'm not here to, to argue like whether it did or didn't happen. It fucking happened. What I'm telling you is if your fucking dog comes back over here, I'm going to kick that piece of shit and kill it dead <laughs> right in front of you and put it on your fucking door. Well, you, that's and a, then I, just went, I went crazy. That's yeah, a great I, way to diffuse the situation. I went very crazy. <laughs> I was like, yeah. That's the diffuse yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I guess that's not a good uh, example. <laughs> I, told, I told him I'd kill his dog. Uh, like, right, yeah, yeah. And then he's just like, oh, and so anyway, bro. he got in my face, oh, got in his face, man. and then I was like, you know what? Like, uh, I don't even remember how it ended, but it was just more like... He just kind of walked off, and then they 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 put him away and everything. But uh, yeah, that's you know, a bad example. What what I put together, and it was like, um, God, I don't remember how old I was. It was it was after the, I know the last guy that I had knocked out in a bar, and I remember like just being so at that point I was starting to get really confident in my strength and who I was. I was twenty four, twenty five. And, you know, I realized that, like, you know, the calmer I was, the more scared everybody was. And so once that kind of switch went off for me, I realized, like... It's actually quite effective. It's very effective. Because that's how... I've always been able to diffuse now, after 25, and there's been a handful of times where something's happened like that, where a guy's, like you said, driving and gets out of his car, wants to fight because you got cut off or whatever like that. And when you just kind of, like, calmly get out... And walk yeah, over. What are you going to do? All nonchalant and say like, "Yeah, hey, dude, what's going on, man? Yeah, what can I do for you?" <laughs> and you don't. <laughs> and he's why you? they're screaming, raging, <laughs> trying to get in your face, and you're just yeah. like, when you act like that, and you have that presence and that confidence, it's it's pretty funny because most of those people that are doing that are really insecure, are really scared deep down, and that's them expressing it by being loud and angry and like that. And when you're the calm, cool guy, and you're like, I'm not even worried, bro. You yeah, ready? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I got this. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. Happy Bring, Thanksgiving. Bring yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. It's <laughs> yeah, so angry. Yeah, you can tell we don't plan shit, right? Yeah. yeah. Bring on the bird. is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Quad. All right, our first question is from Bitch Can Move. Yeah, <laughs> I love it with that. Snap. I love it when Doug says bad words. <laughs> it's my favorite. What is your favorite holiday indulgent food? Ooh. Oh, dude. Uh, Ooh, right away, you're you're quick there. Stuffing. Oh, yeah? I'll eat the fuck out of stuffing. I will eat stuffing. Oh, you need to come by my house then. My mom has, like the, I think, the best stuff. I, well, we'll life. see, because my aunt makes the stuffing that is just, it's... I'm not even a fan of stuffing. It's so good, but it's so you know dense that means? and so heavy. some good stuffing. Yeah, you do. Oh, I see. You, you need to get stuffed. Does so she cook it in the turkey? <laughs> stuff me. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's the real way. That's, the, that's, that's, that's the real step way. one right there. Yeah, like, yeah. Right away, someone's like, oh, my aunt, my mom. Oh, she makes great stuffing. And then she pulls it out of a fucking box or throws it fucking in the oven. Now, I'm the like, stuffing that- Get my- out of here with that <laughs> bullshit. It's got to go in the turkey's ass. <laughs> now, the stuff- <laughs> You got to cram it the, in there. The stuffing that my aunt makes, is it's bread-based, right? So it's a lot of bread. And it's in the turkey, and then there's a lot of other things. Yeah. And then when I was married, my my wife was like, my aunt makes the best stuffing. You don't even know. She makes the best stuffing. So I'm like, I don't think so. So we, we had Thanksgiving at their house, and it was like a rice dish. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? This is not stuffing. <laughs> Call it something else. It wasn't bad, but it's not stuffing. Isn't it, is it funny when someone yeah. tells you, like, you have a dish that's like your mom or somebody in your family's been making you forever, and it's like your favorite, and someone's like, oh, you need to have... My mom's. You need to have this, and they have it. It's like totally made so different. Like, it's so. It wasn't no, good this at is all. Terrible. It this wasn't is good terrible. at all. But stuffing is my absolute favorite. But I'll tell you what: the foods that you know you 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 need to be careful of indulging in if you're watching anything in particular are the I would say the, the sweets, sweets, dude, for sure. Yeah, the sweets cause the most damage in my experience and in my clients' experience. Like if I indulge too much in the sweets, and it's always this is what always happens, right? I'll eat the big. Thanksgiving dinner, we have our traditional Thanksgiving foods, we have our traditional 
Italian foods that we have on Thanksgiving because Italians have a very interesting interesting way of doing Thanksgiving. So I'll eat all that and I'll be like, oh man, I'm fucking full. Like I can't breathe anymore. And then the desserts come out. Right. If I don't have any desserts, I'm usually okay. If I start to eat them, then it goes beyond the point of yeah, full. No return. Yeah, it's yeah. like I'm gonna eat more of these cookies. I'm gonna eat more of this pie. I'm gonna keep going <laughs> until I feel terrible about myself. Yeah, and that's that's what ends up happening. What's your holiday food? Go to sleep and cry. Do you have a, you, what's your holiday food, dude? Um, as far as like a treat, uh, like your favorite indulgent. I think apple pie. Mm. That's that's bomb. Do you have like, someone that makes it homemade or what? Yeah, see, and I'll be honest, dude. My wife can cook, dude. She she came up with this recipe that um, used the the iron skillet, and and uh, like however it works out, it's got this like kind of caramel uh, with it. But um, like she bakes it, and um, man, that is the best fucking apple pie I've ever had. And it, it's one of those things I'll make sure, like I'm gonna go in that direction i'm gonna skip everything else you know that's my thing that's my jam does it have a nice crust because it's in yeah the- it's got all that like you know uh i don't know square pattern kind of crust thing on the top and now, ice cream now adam you're bringing dessert to yours i heard you on the phone with your mom uh i am but i don't know what we're bringing <clears throat> we, and when we bring dessert to our family events it's always like a healthy version of whatever <laughs> yeah so, strawberries well we no, not like that <laughs> and it's not i shouldn't say that it's not healthy right yeah what we are going to do is we're going to bring the the organifi peanut butter cookies that's that we, what it was mm, you're yeah do. yeah so we're that I same mean, ones that you made for so it's not us. like healthy so you know i'm not saying that they're but they're a much better like option if you're going to have four or five cookies you're better off having these organifi cookies than you are having the cookies that my mom makes or whatever that that are just loaded full of, of sugar and calories so are those the same ones you gave that Justin ate all of? Oh them? yeah, yeah. That, Did you eat them all, dude? I love those things. No, I took some. I took some of them home because you guys were going to eat all yeah, of them. I, I brought. I must have brought thirty, and you guys were crushing. You brought a lot of them, dude. So this yeah. cake yeah. is yeah, yeah. So we Kill we'll right we'll now. bring that uh, as a dish, and those are really good. Those and I and I, you know what's great about that uh, and what I noticed different, and I don't know if you guys noticed this. Um, you know when you when you start to get used to not eating sweets, like even this cake right here in front of us, right? So we've all picked at Justin's ice cream cake, and I'm already my stomach is already upset yeah. just from the you know four or five bites that I've had right here, and it's because it's so like Baskin Robbins oh, is so there. sweet, and I now like things that are much lighter. Like yeah. it, it's got just a little bit it's of like sweet. too much. It's like overkill. It's yeah. changed. It's changed your, your oh your, to- my gut is completely different. Not now. just your gut, but your. Palette. Palette. Yeah, yeah totally right. Yeah, no, 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 mm-hmm. for for sure. I right away, it's like whoa, overpowering sweet, and, so, and the same thing goes for any of these treats. Like Katrina and I, we've been we've been making like if we are going to have anything, it's we try and make a healthier version of it, and which normally means it's a lot less sugar in it. There's more natural things inside of it. So I now, if I crave a, a dessert or treat, like I'll have a cocoa whip with yeah. fruit and berries, mm-hmm. like those type know, of things. Like angel food cake or whatever for yeah. me, like with like uh, fruit is like my jam. Like I can't handle, <laughs> yeah. The but sweet it took overload. it took a long time, I think, to to retrain that because for years, I'll be honest, I'll be the other. I was the other person. I mean, I, I've admitted on the show before that I ate you know ice cream every night for fucking probably fifteen years of my life, maybe more. Yeah. And so. You know, it took a long time for me to kind of wing that out, and I think a lot of people they don't they they get they get attached to certain foods for whatever reason, and they're like they don't want to let go of it. And it's like you know, if you if you spend a little time, you discipline yourself of eliminating that, and then when you when you start to have a, you get those cravings months or years later again, and you replace it with like a healthier version of it, mm-hmm. you'll be surprised. You'll start to crave that instead. So now we have to we have to understand that uh, taste is a perception. Just like any other perception that you have. So your body's perceiving something just like you perceive heat or cold or you perceive, you know, emotion and all these different things. So that perception is not uh, the same all the time. It's not the stable, You can change your perception. You can change your perception. Context matters. Food manufacturers know this and they know that if they color something the right color or if you eat it in the right environment with the right lighting, or if it's got the right texture or whatever, that you will perceive it to taste better. Well, you can hack this for yourself as well. And one of the things you can do is what Adam's talking about. If you avoid overly sweet foods, you will perceive foods that are less sweet as more sweet. And over time, you'll find yourself Mm -hmm. perceiving fruit as being as sweet as the way you used to perceive cake. And what you'll find if you go the opposite direction and you eat lots of sweets, 
is that you'll perceive things that are naturally sweet as being bland. And now you're craving, like like even now, tasting this cake, for sure I'm going to crave something sweet later on. And if I push it and I keep doing this for two, three days in a row, right. like we tend to do over the holidays, yeah. I tell you what... <clears throat> It it's not the ho- patterns. It's not the holiday days that screw people up. It's the days after, because mm-hmm. I guarantee people's eating habits are way worse for a good it almost week like or two. Triggers, yeah, this response again. Like, oh, absolutely. oh my god, I want that. That's again. right. Yeah. Absolutely, it's the left. It's the d- day two, day three, day four. It's the weekend. You know, it's mm-hmm. that weekend going. Which, by the way, too leftovers. A lot of people too are sedentary. You know, you lay around. You're with family. You're playing board games. You're watching football. You know, and and then it's real easy just to keep going, keep going. And, you know, Thanksgiving, if you actually enjoy the fuck out of Thanksgiving Day and Thanksgiving dinner and eat the fuck out of stuffing and mashed potatoes and gravy and and turkey, I dare you to. You're not going to get fat from that. You're not going to get fat from one one meal. And I know some people are like, oh, if you saw the way I eat, okay, what, 10,000 calories? Go for it. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to hit 10,000 You're calories. not. You know, yeah. There's people on, online that make viral videos of trying to get to 10,000 calories. It's a fucking, it's hard. It's hard. So let's say you eat, what, six? Right. You know what I'm saying? 6,000 calories. Like, so? You yeah. know what I'm saying? You're not going to put- That's only one day. Yeah, yeah that's one day. You're not going to yeah. You're not gonna put five pounds of body fat on from that one meal. It's what happens is that triggers- now that that oh now I want this I want that and you keep going it's the dis it's the lack of discipline to which is our that. original beef with IFYM because it's almost like this oh if yeah you reintroduce it, it it messes with you you know yeah. it's like something that like starts to repeat there's, in your diet there's stuff hormonally happening too so I mean leptin spikes like when you all of a sudden surge all these carbs and all the sweet and leptin gets shot up and then when leptin gets shot up it tells the brain that we have more fuel to burn and the metabolism starts to kick up. So there's stuff that's going on hormonally. You can too. Exactly. You can actually position a holiday meal or holiday as a way to boost metabolism, build more muscle, and actually burn more body fat. Right. It's, it's, it's the theory behind you know, carb cycling or cheat days or whatever that bodybuilders and athletes will use when they're, when they're getting ready for a show. And so the days after, and I used to tell my clients this all the time, the days pay attention to the days after Thanksgiving and Christmas. You are gonna want to eat more. You are gonna crave these foods more. That's a good thing. It means we've ramped things up. Right. So if you're cool with, the, if you can just maintain for the next couple days, you'll your hunger and stuff will go back to normal. But you'll have burned more body fat and maybe right. improved your performance. Absolutely. Uh, next question is from Hooligan. Were you always growth minded? Can you recall the moment you changed your mindset? That's a great question. So, uh, mm. so let's talk about the growth mindset uh, versus non-growth mindset. Right. Um, <laughs> growth mindset. This would be someone who says, you know, uh, so if you're not growth minded, you would say things like, "That's just the way I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is who I am." You identify with the things you do, with the th- with the way you think, and you say things, you know, like they were born that way. It's in their blood, just the way they are, and they're, they're not going to change. Somebody who's growth minded says, uh, "I can work towards this. I can do this if I work towards it and I try." Um, it's these are individuals who look at situations, challenge themselves. They also look at failure different. That's right. Um, and so, being growth minded, I don't think, I don't think anybody's a hundred percent, or most people aren't a hundred percent growth minded or the other. I think sometimes you're growth minded, or in some areas you may be growth minded, and in other areas you may not be. So growth minded. I'll use myself as an example. I consider myself to be very, very growth minded with most things, and I did not realize that uh, an area that I wasn't growth minded was uh, in relation to like adventure and travel. I've never really enjoyed going places and not knowing what I was going to do or not having things planned out. It was always it kind of stressed me out. Like if I went somewhere, I like to know where we're going, what time we're going to be there, and I'm in a controlled environment. Hmm. I'm not the kind of person that's like. Hey, let's get on I'm this. Figure it out when I get there. Yeah, yeah I hate that. Like yeah. I always hated that. It's like and, really unsettling. And I would identify with it. Like that's just not me. I just don't like it. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm dating a girl who loves doing that. And we went on a road trip when we first started dating, and that's exactly what it was. It was totally unplanned. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of it was, and I identified it at that point. And of course, consider, you know, at the time I was, you know, what, 37, 36, and so I'm already older. And I remember thinking to myself, like. 
oh shit, you know, why <clears throat> this seems like something I'm really rigid on. Mm-hmm. Let me challenge this. Mm-hmm. Let me challenge this because what's the worst that could happen? I don't have a good time, big deal. So let me challenge this. And I actually learned and discovered that I enjoy that. Like I would have never known that before. I thought I hated it, but I never had really done it before. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden I realized that this is something that I actually really enjoy doing. I enjoy going places, not knowing what we're going to do and just figuring it out on the way. And one thing that I noticed throughout my life is when I challenge myself with things that uh, I'm uh, really rigid on, it makes me more likely or it makes it easier for me to challenge myself in other ways. It's mm-hmm. like the more growth minded you become, the more growth minded uh, you it, become. It escalates. I could totally, totally attest to that because for me, like I, I always feel like I've always been growth minded, but there are those things that stick out. Like, why am I so resistant to certain things? And, um, you know, for me, it was, it was food. Food was a big deal for me where I was like, so, um, I I had the same thing all the time. Like I didn't want to like venture outside of like trying new types of foods or like, and, and, and this was definitely something like that was passed on like ha- habit wise from my my parents, my dad especially. Like <laughs> he just wanted the most bland, like non flavorful food ever, right? And so like growing up with that kind of a mentality, it was really tough for me to like try, uh, you know, different types of vegetables, like different types of dishes that you know. Even still, I'm resistant to like seafood and and things like that because it's just like. I don't know. I, I, I have I have a hard time. So I've been challenging myself to eat more fish, to eat, uh, you know, stuff that used to scare me, like Brussels sprouts and eggplant and, you know, stuff like that. Like I, I, and then once you start to get, in, get into that, that mentality, you know, business, uh, you know, relationships, everything else as far as like growth is concerned, benefits. Yeah. Did you did you say things like, oh, I, I don't eat fish? I would just say that. Right, like, I just not, yeah, I just don't do that. I, it's funny, too, because the more aware you become of, of being growth-minded, the more the easier you see it in other people. So I'll say something like, like, well, like with food, like <laughs> we'll be eating dinner and you know my girlfriend's dad will be over, right? And I'll be like, hey, you want some broccoli? And he's like, I don't eat broccoli. Like it's not, uh, you know, I don't like the taste of broccoli. It's, it's like, yeah, I don't yeah, do that. Like identified by not doing yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Or one of my, my youngest sister, she would say this all the time. I don't do dishes. Like, what the fuck does that mean? You don't do dishes. What do you mean you can't? Like, your hands don't work? Like, <laughs> what do you mean by that? Like, it's a yeah. very interesting, but we're all, we all get guilty of it, and I find myself doing it. But the more I challenge those things, the easier it is to challenge moving forward. And now I find that I get off on challenging myself with certain things. Although initially it's tough, especially when it gets pointed out to you. Oh, it's, I think it's very tough, and I think very few people truly are. I think you, ha- you have to learn to seek being uncomfortable. Mm hmm. And I don't think a lot of people do that. I mean, we're as as creatures, we tend to want to gravitate towards what makes us comfortable, feel good, what's easy. Like that's that's actually what's, what's kind familiar. Of, yeah, that's what's natural for us. So it's actually you have to learn to seek outside of that. And if you're not paying attention to it and you're not thinking about it actively, easily you'll just tend to make the decisions that are the the least resistance. Mm-hmm. And you have to actively go after things uh, that put you in that uncomfortable state. For me. There was uh, there was a very pivotal point in my life for sure, and I've shared this story on the on the podcast before, so I apologize to anybody that's heard it before. But it was a it was a, a monumental time for me because I was coming up in in the gym, right? So it's tw- I'm 25 years old and I'm doing great, right? I had my house, making good money, love my job, like top top performer, like everything's like I'm happy, everything's cool, right? And at that time in my life, I'm thinking that I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, where I'm at. I love the company I work for. And one day I'm going to be a vice president. I'm going to make $300,000 a year and I'm going to do do what I love to do, be in the gym, right? And that was really my path. And it was around that time. And, you know, backing up a couple of years before that, I was already like, they were trying to promote me to the GM side. We were talking about my path to become a DM. And so this was kind of the conversation. But what I was what I was recognizing was the company was changing when they after they had sold to Fortsman and Little, and it was no longer the same company that you know I thought it was before. And the way that they were promoting people and the way the kind of money that like my boss, my boss's boss was making, like they've changed their salary. They weren't making that much anymore. And it really made me ask myself, like, is this what I want to do? And I had a conversation 
uh, with the vice president in, in the office and it was him trying to convince me to switch sides. And he was basically trying to convince me to take on more work for you know, no more mo- no more guaranteed money. And the idea was that I had to take a step back to take a step forward. And I remember thinking to myself that, you know, why am I waiting for this company to like pave this way for me? Or why am I, why am I waiting for them to dictate like my growth? Like, why can't, why can't I get smarter than my boss's boss? I already felt like I was smarter than my boss. I already felt like I was better than what he was doing, but because I was not in a position, I was allowing that to dictate like what level I was at. And I thought, what the fuck? Why am I allowing that? Why don't I continue to grow beyond these guys? And if they don't recognize it, I'll move on and do something else. And so that was at that moment. I remember too the the um, CEO would like um, yeah he would post every every week like what book he was reading and he had this whole thing. And so I started reading everything he was reading, and I was like, okay, well I'm just gonna, if my CEO is reading this stuff, I'm going to start reading reading everything that he's reading. And it was the one of the best things that I ever, and it was uncomfortable. I don't like to read. I'm a slow reader. Uh, and so it wasn't something that, and I, when I was done, like with school, I was work, I was always working on my craft, but I recognized that moment that this was something that I was uncomfortable doing. It wasn't doing something I was already good at. I was forcing myself to do something that I felt necessary to, to force me into growth. And so I began on this tear and that was at 25. And I, I remember I outgrew the company. I got to a point where I was like, it was easy for me. Uh, I wanted more. I was I was building other businesses while I was still working for that company. And so I was like, you know, it was the best. It, it empowered me and it gave me leverage because I was pushing myself in that direction. So that was a very pivotal moment. And then I think, like you said, Sal, I think that we're still you know, you're always getting revealed things. Like, and mm-hmm. I, we just had this conversation we had. Um, and then your ego doesn't like it. Right. You know, when we, someone yeah. points it out to you, you're like, what are you talking about? Right. Wow. We, yeah. ju- we just had um, Julie from Paleo MG on the show and we were talking about like haters and people like that post on your social media and that like say things that make you mad and you want to fire back. And she was talking about the things that really would fire up. And I said, you know, I remember the first time that happened when we first started Mind Pump and we even did an episode on it. I remember it kind of like stung me. And that was a, a major growth moment for me in, in this business. I was like, whoa, like I let some fucking person, I don't even know who they are, like actually affect how I felt. And instead of being angry at that person, it made me reflect on me. And so I was giving this advice to Julie was that, you know, instead of like looking at all the haters as, you know, fuck them or responding or not responding, how about looking at them in a positive light? Like, You know, I'm going through and I'm reading all the hate and the ones that actually make me want to respond and the ones that get me fired up is a great tool for me to have self-reflection because why does that, why does that statement bother me? But not the two before that someone called me stupid, someone called me ugly. Then somebody said something else The stupid and ugly didn't bother me. But when they said that I wanted to respond. So why is that? Mm -hmm. You know, what is that? That's, that's telling me something about my own insecurities. Mm -hmm. And for me, this is an opportunity for growth. So if once you learn to make that switch, I think you'll continue to to have to com- be challenging yourself this way. But I thought that was uh, a, an example of something that I've dealt with late, I, lately. Yeah, I, re- I remember uh, years ago, you, you know, when I was I was I was young. I was probably in my early twenties, um, and I would talk to people who would come buy memberships at the gyms I would manage. And I remember it was always shocking to me when I would look at someone or I'd be talking to someone who needs to lose I don't know thirty pounds. And they would say things like, I just can't, like, I can't do it. Like this just, my body just, this won't work. And I remember thinking like, mm-hmm. of course you can. Like, and, and, and at that, I, there was one moment in particular where I'm having this conversation with this woman and she's literally telling me, I just, I can't do it. I can't eat right. I can't not eat these foods. I can't exercise. It just doesn't work for me. And I remember thinking to myself like, wow. Here's a situation where if I was, if you just took my mind and put it in her body, like if I could do all the work for her, I would totally do it. No problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three months, you'd lose 30 pounds, you'd feel amazing, you'd be way more fit. It's not an issue. And then it dawned on me. I wonder what things I think I can't do that other people do Mm. that they look at me in the same way. Right. And so from that moment, I would constantly think and try to find those things. Like I remember in my early twenties, I would think, oh my God, like, you know, I'd have a client that was a multimillionaire, you know, self-made millionaire. And they'd tell me how they, you know, oh, I just figured it out. And I just did it. And I think like, 
well, that's crazy. Like, how does that yeah. work? You're lucky. Maybe you're lucky. And, you know, I've always been a hard worker, but there was always that little bit in my mind, like, like, well, that's, that's so like, how can you do that? Maybe it's just cause you're, you know, super. And I remember thinking like, wait a minute, it's the same yeah. situation. Or somebody gave them money or he, something. Yeah. Started, he's looking you know? at me the same way I looked at that woman. Yeah. He's thinking to himself like, look, kid, it's not. It's not, it's not impossible. Magic. Yeah, yeah, it's not you magic. You have to do it. Just yeah, just do it. Here's the formula, and it'll happen for you. And uh, I, I started to apply that to a lot of different things, and it isn't easy. Yeah, it's very difficult. I'll tell you what, though, <clears throat> fitness is that I found one of the most powerful tools to teach someone a growth mindset that I've ever found. Oh yeah, because you're constantly working on yourself. So you many, so change. many parallels. Yeah. So it's well, well, not only that, but it's it's relatively easy and what i mean by that is i've used this example before you know i'll train someone like parents used to send me their kids all the time so i train people and then they say oh i want you to train my son you know he really needs uh, more confidence or he's not getting good grades or i want you to train my daughter she's got body image issues whatever and i'd start working with these kids and they're usually teenagers and uh usually they were they had low self-esteem or they were insecure or whatever and so we would train and i would make sure to point out um, how they were progressing. So, you know, like if I'm training this kid, this 14 year old kid that's, you know, not doing well in school, uh, getting into trouble, mm -hmm. insecure, and it's our third week and we just did push ups. And I'm like, hey, John, you did 15 push ups. And they look at me like, yeah, no big deal. I'll be like, dude, three weeks ago you did 10. And they'd be like, yeah, so I got stronger. I say, no, no, no. Yeah, you did get stronger, but do you realize that you're not this? You're fundamentally not the same. Okay, so now talking about being a different person, actually, this whole topic, like I remember maybe a couple posts ago, I, I did a post about you know the growth mindset and you know and scarcity, and uh, what brought it up was, I mean, I was talking to an old friend, and um, there's just there's just things that just starting to be more clear to me as far as how people identify, you know, who they are. And some people really, really hold on to that past identification. Like this is who I was then. And I was, you know, in this situation, uh, remember when you did that and remember when you did this and I'm like, yeah, but I was a kid, mm -hmm. you know, like that's not even who I am now. And I don't understand why you still identify with that same person. And, right. um, I thought that that was always like, I don't know when that switch actually happened, but I never looked back, man. I like, if, if anything, I'm always trying to improve my current state. And that's something that I want to focus just on today, like today, present and forward. Like, yeah, I mean, there's things to learn from the past and it's good to kind of reflect from, from every now and then, but to identify with that's who, you know, if people like bring up a story about me from back then, like we were talking about, you know, in the beginning of this podcast, some shitty fight stories and all that stuff. Like I don't identify at all with who I was then. Right. So like, I, I don't know. That's, that's something that's a little bit of like repulsive to me almost. It, it's interesting. Well, yeah. pay attention now what people say, like I struggle with this or I, this, it's like, do you really like, because you've had that in the past, why do you still say that? Why do you, st why are you still you know, verbalizing that, that you are still struggling with something that you dealt with five, six years ago. Like people have a really hard time. Well, with I that, think man. people also think, cause it sounds cool to be growth minded. You know, a, a growth mindset sounds cool. Fixed mindset sounds terrible. The reality of it, of it is a fixed mindset, living in a fixed mindset feels comfortable. It feels safe. You tell yourself things you want to hear. And it's like being in a warm, cozy bed when it's cold outside. Like you just want to stay in there, and it feels nice. And mm -hmm. I'll just be like this: a growth mindset, uh, as as great as it sounds, and yes, it does yield, uh, you know, results that are incredible and hard to quantify. It's a fucking tough mindset to be in all the time. Yeah, it's a very difficult mindset to always be in. You're always uncomfortable. Not only you're always uncomfortable, but you're challenging yourself in ways that you don't want to challenge yourself in. And that's yeah. the key. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I challenge myself all the time. I work out hard all the time. I read a lot of books all the time. Yeah. You like challenging yourself you those like ways. That. Yeah. yeah, what are the ways you don't like to challenge yourself? Right. What, are the, what are the things you don't like to do? Like, do you not like to swim in open water? Mm -hmm. I don't like to swim in the ocean. It's just something I don't do. Why don't you go try it and do it? And that's an area you don't like to Conquer challenge yourself right. or I don't like to talk on a podcast or I don't like to yeah. speak in front of crowds. Right. And I'm saying this check right now and, and I guarantee you there's some listeners right now that I'm hitting their buttons. Like if I say speak in front of a crowd, yeah. I guarantee you a lot of people listening right now are like, oh, fuck no. I used to have panic attacks about that. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? 
That's how you grow. So if it's, you value the, growth, and those are all physical things too. There's a lot of just mental shifts. Mm-hmm. You don't always just the way have, you think of things, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's not always like you got to like find something like I don't, you know, because I'm thinking you're saying things like don't go out to the ocean. I'm thinking someone's scared of sharks, someone's scared of drowning, they can't swim, and it's like you go out there and swim, <laughs> you yeah, fucking yeah. drown because you can't swim, right? No, it's it's more about changing your mindset, right? It's more about that than it is really like actually actively going to do something. You do not have to physically go and challenge yourself with something that you physically don't like to do all the time. It's just learning to look yeah. at things differently. I actually have to give uh, Aaron Al- Alexander some credit for this. Like, I remember we were doing a pot his first podcast we did with him, and I-, I remember saying, like, I am not good at this or whatever. And then having to check myself as certain, well, I am. Like, like, why am I associating that I'm not good at that? Like, instead of I'm working on this, like changing the language of it even. Mm-hmm. Right, Yeah. Right. That's is, what I mean. Yeah. That's just, just changing the way you think about it. Uh, is a major, major difference. Yeah. You know, I know. Yeah. F- fitness is a great way to develop a growth mindset. It can be a one. It, it can also be one to create a fixed one. So it's, it is a, a double edged sword. But if you look at the way you can change your body through work and whatever, you start to realize that you're not this stagnant thing that you can change and morph and become more fit, more healthy, whatever. Um, so that's one way. Here's another one that I found to be very powerful. The next argument you get with someone, try to imagine that they're right. Like just just for a second, entertain the fact because the reason why you argue in the first place with someone is because you think you're right. Yeah, you won't argue with someone if you th- think they're right. So the whole reason why you're having a heated discussion or argument with someone this is a great time because it's a holiday, right? This is dropping on th- Thanksgiving. You're gonna see your family right now. <laughs> you're gonna first we're getting people fighting, yeah. and they were like, "Here's how you make yeah. up." Gu- guaranteed, yeah. you're gonna see you know some family members and shit that push your buttons. For a second, sit there and think to yourself, okay. Maybe they're right. Entertain it. And Not even say maybe. I say say they're right because it's bothering you. Yeah. If if you're getting into it with a family member and they're saying something, Sal, you always do that, blah, 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 blah. Don't even, yes, they're right. And like they're right some, somewhat. Whether some, it's even the slightest bit, if it's caused them to do that to you, there's something that I've I've put that off for them to feel this way. Dude, but, and I, I've done this so many wow. times where I'm having an argument. I'll, t- I'll argue with my girlfriend or I'll argue with a friend or whatever. And we'll be talking and I'm like, I'm totally right. I'm totally right. And then at some point it clicks. I've created a habit of doing this where I'll, I'll, I'll think about it for a second. That's why sometimes if I have an argument with someone, I like to take a break because it gives me an opportunity to do this because it's hard to do this while you're arguing because while I'm arguing, I'm defending, right? I'm defending myself. So I'll leave the situation and I'll think to myself and sometimes they are right. That, it blew me away because I was a person that never thought I was wrong because I can argue really well. I can articulate my position really well. I'm a very good communicator, so it's easy for me to convince myself that I'm always right. Hmm. But I'll leave a situation That's and I'll good awareness. Oh yeah, I'll leave a situation and sometimes I'll be like, "Oh fuck, like okay, they are right and it sucks, but then it's awesome. Hmm. But then it's great." Next question is from Cray Manley. What do you think the future of self-healing looks like, such as meditation, quality movements, quality nutritional foods, etc.? I think if you're starting a business, that's in any of these fields right now. It's a beautiful Ooh, time. It's a to do booming it. one. It is, and it's only going to. So, if you're looking at spa resorts, massage therapy, float tanks, um, anything in that, uh, any organic food world, like all natural stuff, anything heading in that direction, all that entire industry, that wellness industry, is on the rise, and it's going to continue to go on the rise because it's the counter to. The other side, which is we all know that we're becoming more plugged in, right? We're becoming more attached. We're becoming more- Everything's on all the time. Right. We're becoming more connected to our computers, our phones, and we're, we are, we're plugged in way more than we ever have in our lives, which is guaranteed that if that's the case, there will always, there'll always be a counter to whatever culture is going on. Mm-hmm. So this is the counterculture. And I think that the more people that realize the need for it, you're going to see a huge increase in it. So I think that's what the future looks like in it. Then I also believe, you know, you're going to have, you're going to, we're going to see the extreme of it also, because I still believe that just as it's human nature, we always tend to do this, that whatever it is you're doing, you're probably not doing enough of what you should be doing. And it's vice versa. It doesn't matter if you're the, the plugged in group and that's everything you do, or you're the super hippie, crunchy person who just meditates, never looks at any electronics, doesn't want anything to do with it because there's, there's good and bad to both sides of that. And you're going to have people that really divide themselves and, and say, this is the way all the way and that's so bad and awful for you or this is the only way if you want to be successful and that that way is silly and old old th- old way of thinking but in reality 
it's very similar to what we talk about with health and fitness. The health and fitness space is they need to learn to intertwine. Yeah. When I hear healing, I think of it's like real pain, like something I need to heal from versus just get away. Like, you know, there's things you need to get away. Like if my kids are like, you know, driving me crazy where I need to get away. That's not necessarily healing because I'm not like, I don't have this pain that I'm hurting from. I just need to get like a little break. When I think healing, I think you're dealing with some deep shit. And something that I learned relatively recently, because I had a real tough five-year stint of, you know, losing someone very close to me with cancer, going through a, a divorce of after being married for 15 years. That and I was, you know, talking with a good friend of mine who um, themselves they had gone through lots of uh, issues and had figured out ways to to help themselves. And something they said to me really stuck, and that is the only way to get through. The, the only way to get uh, through something is to go through it, is to feel it. You can't go around it. So if you've got pain or something that you need to heal from, you can't distract yourself away from it to heal from it. You can't not talk about it. You can't not think about it. That only lasts for so long. The only way to heal is go, to go through it. You literally have to feel it, process it, and go through it, which sucks because you don't want to. You don't want to think about that, you know, when if you were a kid and you had, you know, abusive, you know, uh, parents or that relationship or that thing that you did or whatever. But you have to, you have to go through it. And so I think the future of self healing deals with situations that help foster that. And typically, it's situations in, in in places very like what Adam said, actually very similar, where you're not distracted, where you have no other choice but to go through, where you go to these, you know, silent retreats. You know, I hear about people going on these silent retreats, which sounds absolutely terrifying to me, which actually makes me want to do it. Like, why am I so terrified right. of going on a three-day meditate meditation technique uh, retreat where we're not allowed to talk to anybody? That sounds so fucking terrifying to me, but really there's nothing terrifying. Like, why am I scared? Obviously, there's something that I'm running from so maybe I should go, uh, I, you know, I should go do it. And I think a lot of the self-healing, uh, you know, tools of the future are going to be based around being in nature, being around distraction. You don't have anything to do, maybe not even anybody to talk to, yeah. maybe no substances that you can distract yourself with where you're just there with your thoughts in the quiet of whatever, where you have to go through it. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, that's a little more esoteric than the direction I was going to go. More like, uh, you know, like what maybe Dr. Brink is kind of creating with his recovery labs and like oh. having, you know, uh, something like a refuge. But like as, as far as, um, you know, creating a space, like I would like to see more gyms that are it's, it's a structured environment that is available like in conjunction like with a gym or it's like in your community where it's like you just go there yeah there's not a lot of talking going on there's just more self-reflection it's just it's a physical experience so that way you know people like me are more likely to um you know get involved and get into it because like i think you know there there's a little bit of that uh, resistance where, um, you know, everybody's so go, go, go and uh, type A where just to get them to stop everything and be quiet and still is like so like that, that that's like repulsive on like every end for, uh, you know, people with that mentality. So I think having an environment to help kind of foster that and kind of get them into that zone will be really helpful. It's funny. We'll 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 be we'll interview uh, guests that are like these super self starters, like super motivated, hardcore, just machines. Awesome to talk to. Very motivating to meet. Uh, you know, people like you know Julie Bauer, who we just met, or Amelia Boone. Um, these are just they're just badasses. They achieve at very very high levels. Mm -hmm. And then you bring up stuff like meditation and yoga to them, and you can see. All, I already I can always always predict how someone's going to respond. Yeah. When I say that, depending on the kind of person. People like that, they'll always say the same thing about something like yoga. Like, oh, I think I did a couple. Times. I hated it. I had to yeah. sit there. Yeah. I had to sit still. I hate it. Yeah. And it's like well, that's, that's probably that's exactly why it's good for you. That's exactly what you need yeah. Yeah. Uh, in order to you know to to move ahead. So I think a lot of the tools are going to look like that, just because like you know a lot of what Adam was saying. 
we don't do any of that anymore. Yep. It used to be, I'll tell you what, man. There used to be a lot of quiet and silence, bro. There used, yeah, used, yeah, yeah. used to be too much for my life. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like There used to be a time You stood where, in line and you didn't do shit. Bro, I lived out <laughs> I stared at the saying. wall. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, oh, I, my I, God. I lived out in the country, man. I lived out in the country and there was like, there be could be days I might not see anybody else but me. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of quiet time. Yeah. But it's not like that Or anymore. when you drive. It's crazy. Remember back in the day you drove? Like you weren't talking you to nobody. To the engine, hum. it was just you and uh, yourself. Funny you say that because so I'll do this. I did it this morning. Um, sometimes, like if I'm just not in the mood, if I'm not listening to an audio book, or I'm just not in music mood, um, I just I shut I shut my radio. I drove all the way to work today. You know, 20, 20 25 minutes. Just quiet. Just complete Clear silence. Your head. It's actually very meditative for me. Absolutely. Because it's rare that you do that. You're always in the car listening something or doing something, right? Is, you know what I'm but saying? make sure and keep downloading our podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, make Mind sure pump's a great way to yeah. heal. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Next up is Alex Ald 99 In MAPS Aesthetic, what is your reasoning for putting some isolation exercises before some compound lifts? This is a good, this is a good question because the common knowledge is that you always do compound li- lifts first. Mm-hmm. Uh, before I go into this breakdown, if people are listening and don't know exactly what that means... Compound lifts are exercises that involve... Multi-joint. Yeah, more than one joint. So a bench press would involve my elbows and my shoulders, so it's a compound lift. A squat would involve my knees, hips, and ankles, so that's a compound lift. An isolation one is one that only involves one joint. So a fly would be an isolation exercise. A a, A curl would be an isolation exercise. A leg extension would be an isolation exercise. And common knowledge says... That you need, you should do the heavy, hard compound lifts first in your routine when you have the most energy, when your central nervous system is the most fresh, because those movements require uh, the most out of you. Which is exactly how mass anabolic is. That's designed. right, and it's how you should train a lot of the times. I'd say a majority of the time you should train that way. Yep. But that doesn't mean there isn't benefit from doing an isolation exercise mm-hmm. before a compound lift. When you do an isolation li- uh, exercise before a compound lift, uh, there's a, there's you 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 can prime a muscle to be utilized differently in that compound lift. So I'll give you a good example. If I uh, want to hit my quads, if let's say when I squat, I just my quads aren't firing the way I want. If I did some heavy leg extensions first and then went to my compound squats, I'm going to feel my my quads a lot more in the squat than I normally oh, would. Big time. This is true for any muscle, and it's a great technique for mm-hmm. lagging body parts or for just not being connected. Because right. you want them to contribute. That's right. And yeah. if, if you're not connected to a muscle, if you feel like you're not feeling your butt on squats, do some isolation glute exercises, then do your heavy squats, and I guarantee you'll start to feel your glutes. I learned this as a kid because you know, I've been working out for a long time, and I was a, a, a student of working out from day one. This is the way I approach things. And I read uh, Mike Menser's Heavy Duty. This was a book that uh, it's a, it was a pivotal uh, time in my life for a few different reasons, but it helped me identify uh, a few things that I was doing that wasn't working, and I, I implemented a few things that helped you know my body respond again. One of which is reducing the total amount of volume. I gave my body more rest, all that stuff. But one thing that he did in Heavy Duty was he talks about pre-exhaust uh, supersets. And what a pre-exhaust superset is, it's an isolation movement followed by a compound movement one after another for a target muscle. And one of the ones that uh, he has in heavy duty that he talks about a lot is a dumbbell pullover, which is an isolation movement for the lats, to a pull-up, which is a compound movement that also involves the lats. Now, up until this point, I'm a kid, so I'm probably 15 maybe years old. I didn't feel my lats ever when I worked out my back. I just mm-hmm. didn't have the connection to them, and I didn't, frankly didn't probably have the muscle there to really feel it. Never got a pump on my lats, ever. I got a pump on my shoulders, my biceps, my triceps, my chest, my legs. Never felt a pump in my lats. Then I read this book, and I started doing uh, isolation movements on my lats, like straight arm pulldowns, dumbbell pullovers, and et cetera, really getting my lats to do a lot of work, feeling them contract, connecting to them, then I went to my compound movement, and for the first time in my life, I felt a pump in my lats. And it fucking, I remember the first time, I literally remember it. I was in my backyard. I'm doing dumbbell pullovers across my bench, and I started just doing them slow, and I'm feeling my lats stretch. I'm feeling my lats squeeze. 
Then I go do pull-ups. I get off the pull-up bar and I'm standing there and I'm like, holy shit. Like I can feel a pump in my lats. And that's when I really learned the benefit of incorporating well, think, think of it from a neurological standpoint like you're prioritizing mm-hmm. neurons to a, a muscle that is you know that you want definitely to feel in a movement like that and in a compound movement you're never working just one muscle in a compound movement you're working several different muscle groups and if i if my goal as a bodybuilder right it's just like a perfect example which i love that you use the pullover because that is a great example of, of something that I, I would definitely do this with and i think it's in the program too is you know, I, I want this big wide back. But when I do pull ups in the past, you know, when I was younger also It was all biceps. Biceps, yeah, yeah. My biceps would fatigue first. I wouldn't get my back wouldn't get sore. My biceps would get sore because that was a lot of work to pull and I was pulling up with my biceps. So by doing the pullovers, I prioritize the neurons back there into my mm-hmm, lats, mm-hmm. Telling, telling them that wake up, fire, and then you go in there and you do that, and then you absolutely will feel that. So there's a huge advantage to doing that. Yeah, I mean that. Duh. I, I I figured this out too more from just utilizing isometrics the same way. Mm. So just like you would do reps, like I would do uh, more sustained holds where I was just trying to create that pathway and get those neurons to communicate to that area of my body. So to contribute to these compound less, same exact, you know, uh, mentality with that, just a different uh, technique used. And you I can, think it, I think it's important, like you said too, Sal, is that it's, this is not like something that you always do because mm. then you don't want to make that mistake because there are, huge strength benefits to you just going into your compound lift so you have every muscle recruiting that you can and and, and they're fresh mm-hmm. but this is why you find this in maps aesthetic but you don't find this in maps anabolic is now aesthetics we've we're assuming that you've already built a good solid foundation because you've gone through probably red and green and now you're into aesthetics now we're sculpting now we're shaping our, our goals are different you don't care so much if you your, you know, your bench goes up an extra, you know, mm-hmm. 100 pounds or whatever like that, or five, 10 pounds. You care more about, you know, sculpting your physique. So, and it's a great way to do that. I always like to target a, a lagging body part that's a part of a compound before going in it if it's a lagging body part. Mm-hmm. So, another example would be like the triceps with chest. Let's say you have a very dominant chest, but you have weak arms. You know, so you actually getting your triceps more involved before you go to your chest. Well, yeah, it's going to hinder your your bench press, and you're not going to be able to bench probably your best bench, but you're definitely going to feel more of your triceps yeah, in there. You're and there, build your arms. There is areas that, and that would be for somebody like I said, if who has a dominant chest but not triceps. So. You can do this for uh, any part of your body you don't. This is where I recommend it. Any part of your body you don't feel uh, with the feel compound, or lag, right? With that lag, or you don't feel so. If you mid back, even mid back. So, oh, when I do my back exercises, I get a lat pump, but I never feel my mid back really work. You can do these kind of horizontal shrugs where you grab a bar. I've had clients do this where, you know, they don't, they can't get them to squeeze it. So they'll do these horizontal shrugs where they'll hold onto a bar, arms are straight, and they pinch the shoulder blades back with the arms straight and let them come forward. And I'll have them do that for like 10 reps, and then I'll have them start rowing. And next thing you know, oh shit, I really feel my mid back really start to work. And so, although compound lifts build more muscle, period, they do, they build more muscle, they don't if you don't have a good connection. So, this is something that you can get, do to create a better connection, but then the compound lifts still are your main mass builders. Now, that being said, I mean, it's a technique, and like all techniques and exercise, if you haven't done it for a while, you do it, you're going to get some benefit from it. Right, right. So and even if you, if you, all, and if you always do it, it's going to start to... It's, it'll stop working. Right. And I learned that lesson too, because then all of a sudden, that's how I was doing. My back, my yeah. back workouts were pullovers to pull-ups, and then it you know, didn't well, work that well. We didn't even touch on this, but this is, this is actually the, the science behind the butt builder guide. Like, you know, what, mm-hmm. you want to know like how, how we, what we do in there that's so unique and different is we teach people how to in, get their glutes firing before they go do big compound lifts. So, you know, all these isolation glute kicks, butt kicks, all the, yeah, that's not going to grow someone's butt really big. But what it will do is it'll help get them connected there. So then you can go over to a big compound movement, real similar to like Sal was saying with the squat. I, you know, I rarely ever do I have somebody who, who's squatting and they want more quad focus, but it, it could be. Most people want more glutes, right? Mm-hmm. More, especially when the girls are wanting to squat and, and build their glutes. So I'll do like a glute bridge or donkey kickbacks, whatever like that. And then just a little bit, not fatiguing it, not doing it like crazy. You're just trying to get it firing and then go right into your squat and you watch how much your ass feels. Absolutely. Check this out. Go to YouTube, Mind Pump TV. We post fitness videos all the time. We have tons and tons all of great content day. on there. 
Uh, all you gotta do is go to Mind Pump TV, subscribe to our channel, and if you like a video, share it with everybody. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.